This video will cover the basics of recording with the Canon Vixia cameras, also known as the HV20 or HV40. Other than some minor differences, these two models are virtually the same to operate. The contents of the Vixia kits are the HV20 or 40 camera, a power supply with a connecting cord, a remote control, an RCA three-way to mini cable, and a menu setting sheet. The first thing you need is power to the camera. Your two options are either battery powered or with the power supply. The battery is connected to the back of the camera by lining up the metal contact plates on the battery to the metal pins of the camera. Slide up until it clicks into place. To remove the battery, push the battery release button on the bottom of the camera and then slide the battery out. A fully charged battery should last you several hours of recording time, but you should always have a backup ready. And plug in whenever you can. Plug the power supply into the DC port on the back of the camera and use the connecting cable to plug it into the wall. The next step is to insert the mini DV tape. Slide the open eject button while pulling the door open. Insert the cassette with the sprockets facing in and the label side up. Close the compartment by pressing the inner door where it says push, then close the outer door when the compartment is all the way down. To record, push the little green button on top of the camera and slide it towards camera. Use either the viewfinder or the LCD panel to view your image. The panel can be swiveled in several positions depending on your angle. Whatever you do, do not force it. Check that the mode switch located on the side of the camera is set to auto. For this video, we will use only the auto functions. To start recording your footage, press the start stop button. You will see that the camera does a 10 second countdown. It is best to let this countdown finish before your action begins. Also, be sure to leave plenty of time after your action ends. These steps are helpful for the post-production process. If you are shooting handheld video, it is best to have a firm grip on the camera, not just for safety reasons, but to also get the steadiest shot possible. Put your right hand through the adjustable hand strap and use the left hand for support. This also allows you to have easy access to the record button as well as the zoom toggle switch. The zoom toggle switch is pressure sensitive to allow you to do slow or fast zoom shots. W means wide and T means telephoto. To get as steady a shot as possible, keep your arms tucked in close to the body. Not that close. Relax. And whenever possible, keep the camera zoomed out all the way. This camera has a 10 times optical zoom, which means when you zoom in onto a subject, your body motion is amplified 10 times. This camera's steady shot function has been turned on and reduces some of the shake. If you are doing a handheld pan shot, start with your body in the awkward position and finish in a stable stance. First, loosen the tilt knob of the tripod to allow you to tilt the handle up and have access to the legs. Pull the legs out so that you can stand it firmly on the ground. On each leg, release the top locking mechanism and pull out the legs individually. If you need more height, then you can do the second stage of the legs. You can release the column lock to extend it even further. If you still need more height, you'll have to find something even higher. To mount the camera on the tripod, you will need the quick release plate. Pull the release mechanism for the plate and mount the plate on the bottom of the camera by lining up the black pin with a smaller hole in the camera and point the lens notation towards the lens of the camera. Then screw the plate onto the camera. Angle the camera down so that the front edge of the plate is under the overhang of the tripod. Press down so that the locking mechanism springs into place. To pan the tripod, you can release the locking nut beneath the camera. To tilt, you release the locking nut on the side of the tripod. You can leave the pan lock loose, but if you are stepping away from the camera or want a static shot, be sure to tighten the tilt lock. When you are carrying the tripod, please carry it by one of the legs like this. Do not carry it by the handle since it could do damage to the tripod. For most cameras, the onboard microphone is not the best option to collect good audio. 
You will need some more gear to get better sound. An external microphone, an XLR to 1 8 inch cable, and some headphones. Connect the microphone to the audio cable, also known as an XLR. Make sure the microphone clicks into place. For safety reasons, loop the other end of the cable around the handle and then plug the 1 8 inch connector into the mic input, located under a plastic covering on the right side of the camera. To monitor the audio, wrap your headphone cable around the handle and plug the 1 8 inch connector into the AV headphones jack. If you hear a buzzing noise, you just need to adjust the setting in the menu to be able to monitor audio with your headphones. Use the menu settings guide included in the camera kit to navigate you to this option. In order to make sure your tape and footage are okay, you will want to play back the tape. Set the camera into the play mode and then use the buttons on the front of the LCD panel to rewind the tape. Hit the play icon and see if your footage is okay. Again, if you are hearing that buzzing noise, it's just a setting in the menu. If you have any further questions, either call Academic Tech Services at extension 5069 or stop by Sealy Mud 110.